master the most crucial mechanic in the game to have an easier time with challenging content in Genshin Impact. The first thing you will notice is that energy comes in the shape of particles and orbs. Without getting too much into the boring details, the basic idea is that the more of these particles and orbs you absorb with your current character, the faster their elemental burst becomes available. And keep in mind that the other party members also get a portion of the obtained energy, but they won't get as much as the character who picked up the energy. But this isn't the full picture you're getting and there's actually more ways you can earn energy. The first one of course is a particle, which can be generated from attacking enemies, using your elemental skill or even activating your weapon passive skills like the Fabonius Warbow. The second one is an orb, which as of now only gets dropped by certain enemies and provide a lot more energy than a particle. And each enemy has a specific time when they will drop either a particle or orb, and it depends on the remaining health they have. Now the third one is going to be coming from your character's basic attacks. After every four or more basic attacks, you will obtain exactly one energy point for the current character. And this isn't going to be a lot, especially for characters with bursts that have high cost, but it's good to know you can still generate simply from attacking. Finally, the last way of obtaining energy comes from character constellations and certain artifact set bonuses. And even some weapons like Prototype Malice provide energy, and unlike Favonius Warbow, these aren't particles, they just automatically get added to your character. Basically, now that you have full grasp on how energy is obtained, you can start to capitalize on it by using various useful methods. You probably noticed that some of these particles and orbs come in different colors which are actually based on an element. For example, when you're fighting a Pyro Whopper Flower, you will get a total of 3 elemental particles when reducing their health and even 1 orb after defeating it, all of which are going to be of Pyro Element. And here's where efficiency comes in. If the energy element matches the character's element, you're getting the best amount of it, while anyone else who doesn't match the element will get 3 times less. So for example, a single particle that will match your character's element will give them around 3 energy points, but if you picked it up with a different element hero, you will only get roughly one point. And let's not forget that these particles and orbs also transfer the energy to everyone else in the party, except they will get less energy but still benefit from the matching elements type. So to completely solidify your understanding, if Xiangling picks up a pyro elemental orb, she will get about 9 energy points, and the rest of the team will get about 2 points each, except for Kli, because she is of pyro elements and will receive roughly 7 points. And you can see from this example just how massively different these energy gains can be based on the the elemental alignment. So the next time you're fighting an enemy, take a special notice what type of elemental particles and orbs they produce. In fact, some enemies will actually produce non-elemental orbs or particles, which will reward the same amount no matter what type of element character belongs to. Now that you know the types of energy sources and the importance of how much energy you gain from elemental alignment, it's time you learn some advanced tricks. Now probably the most important and useful technique to learn would be that elemental particles take time to get to your character after using their skill. One example is using your elemental skill followed by a burst. It's already clear if you have your burst fully charged and obtain any more energy it won't save up and will go to a waste, so if you have both your elemental skill and burst available, you can use your skill and immediately activate your burst at the same time. And the idea behind this this trick is that because your elemental skills generate more energy particles, they don't immediately get added to your character and instead float around a little bit before they start gravitating towards your character. And during this crucial duration, if you cast your burst, these particles will travel back to you when the burst gauge is empty and you will obtain the energy, saving some time on your elemental skill cooldown and increasing overall efficiency in your energy gain. But there's another excellent way of utilizing this technique by switching characters while the particles are still traveling towards you. For example, if you use Kaya's skill, and immediately switch over to Chi Chi, she will now get the cryo elemental particles. And what's even cooler is that even if you are using a level 1 character, their skills still generate the same amount of particles, so this can be especially useful when trying to clear the spiral abyss as fast as possible. Basically, it doesn't matter who generates these particles and orbs, you only obtain this energy with someone who's currently active on the field. And since using an elemental skill creates corresponding element particles, you can utilize this with two same element heroes and efficiently gain energy depending on who needs it the most. Now that you have mastered the art of energy generation, the last remaining piece of the puzzle will be the energy recharge. Each character by default has 100% energy recharge, which means if you pick up an orb or particle, you will get their base value. So by increasing your energy recharge percentage, you essentially increase the amount of energy you gain from these particles and orbs. And it's important to keep in mind, the one energy point you generate 4 or so basic attacks won't get affected by energy recharge, and this also applies to any artifact or weapon bonuses that reward energy as well 
well as character constellations. So essentially, energy recharge will only improve the amount of energy you gain from orbs and particles only, but as you can imagine, these are the most substantial sources of energy anyways, and even getting around 150% energy recharge will yield some insanely good results. And a lot of challenging content depends on how often you can cast your elemental bursts, and coming prepared with characters who have good energy recharge can seriously improve your overall results, so keep this in mind when building your ultimate team. Energy regeneration is one of the most complex topics in the game, but also the most rewarding if understood correctly. To summarize, there are various ways you can obtain energy, the most obvious ones being the particles and orbs. And they can be of different element depending on the type of enemy you're fighting or the elemental skill your character has used, and you can get the best amount of energy if the character's element matches. This also means that because you can visually see these orbs and particles in the game, you can quickly switch between characters or even activate your skill followed by a burst to fully maximize the energy gain. Finally, energy recharge is an important stat that increases the energy value of these orbs and particles and will lead to your bursts activating more often. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell as well as gently press the like button. For more short and useful guides, check out our other videos or visit us at gotchagamer.com for an up-to-date tier list. Thank you for watching us.